more. All right. Uh, today we're going to focus on completing the square, uh, which sometimes people get this confused with factoring because we use the box for this, just like we use the box for factoring. But the difference is when we do completing the square, our box has to literally be a square, meaning the same along the top as it is on the side. We have to have the same side lengths on top and on the side. Um, completing the square, we can use it basically anytime your a value is one and your b value is even. Or if we ask you to use complete the square. Um, but if your a value is not one and if your b value is not even, I wouldn't recommend it. You can still use it, uh, just becomes a little bit more awkward. Usually it involves more decimals and we have other ways that we can use instead, right? Like the quadratic formula. But if A is one and B is even, we can use completing the square, which is a great method. Um, it does have a few more steps than factoring. So we'll go through the steps as we do this first example here. The first thing is instead of standard form, right? This is in standard form because it's equal to zero. Instead of standard form, we actually want the C value to be on the other side. So instead of equals zero, we're gonna move this value to the right side. And we're only gonna leave our A and our B on one side and our C goes to the other. So that's the first big difference. And then we're gonna take this and we're going to start by putting it in the box. We know our first term goes in the first box. But we also know that these two terms have to add to the middle, right? Which in this case is 6x. But in order to make this a square, we have to have the same values in these two spots. So we're going to split the 6x in half, which will give us 3x and 3x. So now when we factor it, we get an x here, x here, plus 3, and plus 3. So now we literally have a square. Right? x plus 3 is the same length as x plus 3. It is a square. What we've done, though, is we've, we still have a blank here because this was not part of our original problem. And we know that if this is 3 and this is 3, what has to now go here? Well, it has to be 9 because 3 times 3 is 9. But if I'm going to add if I'm going to add nine here, because that's essentially what I did, right? I put the nine over here, so this would factor to x plus three times x plus three. I need to also add a nine to this side. So my third step is we're going to write the quadratic side, which is this side, right? Quadratic, as a binomial squared. Well, we know if we factor this, we get x plus three times x plus three which can also be written as x plus 3 squared. So this is my binomial squared. And then on the other side of the problem, we have to do negative 11 plus 9, which is negative 2. Okay. And then our last step is to solve and simplify. So to undo the squared, we're going to take the square root of both sides. This becomes x plus 3 but what's the square root of a negative number? Okay, we've ran into a problem that has no solutions. Because we can't take the square root of a negative, we're just gonna stop right there and we're gonna call this no real solutions. When we complete the square, we do usually get solutions, but it is possible that we don't get any. So this is an example where we have no real solutions. Okay, a couple more examples for today. All right, so first step, we don't want it equal to zero. We want to move our C to the other side. So we're going to go ahead and add one. And we get x squared plus 10x plus the new value we're going to find is equal to one. And when we add this value, we're going to have to add it to the other side as well, right? Keep the balance. We're going to use our box. First term, first box. But now we're going to split our middle. So we're going to divide the 10x into 5x and 5x, which means this becomes x, x plus 5 plus 5. And what does our new c value have to become, or our new term right there? 5 times 5, which is 25. 
So in order to make the quadratic right here into a perfect square, we need to have 25. But we also have to add 25 to this side to keep it balanced. And we can now rewrite this as our perfect square, which is x plus 5 squared. And that equals 1 plus 25, which is 26. And then finally, we can solve. I'll start by taking the square root of both sides. This side's just the x plus 5 that was in the radical. And then over here, I need to do the square root of 26. So I can do my factor tree. I get 2 times 13. Hmm. Oh, I can't reduce it, or I can't simplify it. So I'm going to leave this as plus or minus. We always put plus or minus. Square root of 26. Our last step, we want to get x by itself. So we're going to subtract 5 on both sides. And our final solution set will be x equals negative 5 plus or minus square root 26. And as a reminder, this is two solutions. You have negative 5 plus the square root of 26 and negative 5 minus the square root of 26. So two different solutions. All right, number three. We do have something else over here, which is kind of good, but this is still on this side, so we need to move the 10 over. So we're gonna subtract 10 on both sides. x squared plus 2x plus our new number equals negative nine plus our new number. Draw our square, right? Not just any box, but it's a perfect square. First term, first box. Split the middle, so 1x, 1x, and this, well, we'll get there in a second, take out my common factor, I get 1x, that's got to be plus 1, plus 1, that's good, we've made a square, right, x plus 1, x plus 1, but what number has to go here, that's right, we need to put a 1, so I'm going to add 1 to both sides, and we end up factoring the left side into x plus 1 squared as our perfect square. The right side we add and get a negative, and you might already recognize we have another no solution because our next step is to take the square root of both sides, x plus 1 equals, and the square root of a negative, no real solutions, so this has no real solutions. If you solve this problem with the quadratic formula, you would also get no real solutions. If you tried to factor it, it wouldn't factor. So no matter which way you solve it, you'll get no real solutions. All right, last couple examples for today. We want to move the C to the other side. X squared minus 12X plus the new c value we're going to find to get our perfect square, equals negative 33. And just because this is a negative doesn't mean it's no solution, because we might end up adding enough over here to make it positive. So let's see what happens. Draw my box, or my square, right? Not just any box. Split the middle term, negative 6x, negative 6x. Take out my common factor figure out what goes around the outside, and we end up getting x minus 6 in both spots, which is good because we want a square. But if those are both negative 6, what number has to go here? Well, negative 6 times negative 6 is 36. So we're going to add 36. Make sure I add it to both sides. This will now factor into a perfect square. So it factors into the x minus 6 squared. And the right side now becomes negative 33 plus 36, which is 3. So since it is positive, we will be able to get solutions. Take the square root of both sides. x minus 6 equals, whenever we're solving and we take the square root, we need to put plus or minus. Square root of 3 cannot be simplified, so we leave it square root of 3. 
And then finally, to get x by itself, we're going to add 6 to both sides. And we get x equals 6 plus or minus square root 3. All right. Um, number 5 and number 6, I put less room because we're not actually going to solve them. And I want you to think about why would we not use complete the square on these two problems? Um, because, I mean, they are quadratics. We could try to complete the square, and we actually could use complete the square. But it's not ideal for these two problems. The reason it's not ideal for this problem is our a value is not 1. So I'm going to say use another method. And when in doubt, we use our one-stop shop, the quadratic formula, which we'll be practicing again tomorrow. But anytime your a value is not 1, I do not recommend completing the square. The other time we said to not use complete the square is if your b value is odd, right? Because when we split this in half, we'd get 7.5 and 7.5 for our two spots, which would lead to a bunch of decimals, and our new c value that we add to both sides would be decimals. And we could solve it, and it's not that big of a deal, but we'd rather use a different way. So if your a value is not 1, you use another method. If your B value is not even, use another method. But if your A value is one and your B value is even, completing the square is a nice, easy method that we can use to find our solutions. So again, hopefully this was a nice review for you. Hopefully you're doing okay with this stuff. Again, if, you're, if you have questions, please make sure you're reaching out to your teacher, set up a Zoom meeting, send the emails, whatever it takes, uh, work with a friend to get some help, but we want to make sure that you guys are prepared for IM3. So do the work that you need to do uh, to make sure you're ready. So appreciate you guys, hope you're doing well, and we'll see you tomorrow.